you know, getting up in front of a crowd of people, uh, a lot of people don't have the courage to do that. You know, they don't want to be exposed, you know, and that's, that's one of the most uh, uh, probably liberating things about, uh, about boxing. To go into a room, a ring, and just declare dominance over someone. I own you. That's the, the addiction for me. And I'm good at it. I'm damn good at it. I grew up in a very violent home and you know a lot of uh, a lot of anger and a lot of violence and I was always protecting somebody or uh, particularly my mother. And uh, my mother was a stay-at-home mom and uh, you know we had to eat. <laughs> so I had to quit school and I was only out of school for a year. You know when I was a senior in high school which was uh, 1988, and my mother wanted me to fight in the Kansas City Gold Gloves, which is a tournament that all my uncles and brothers had won. I'd never fought in it. I'm like, I'd love to, you know? And uh, once I started getting into that, you know, that whole mindset kicks in, where you're like, just totally focused on it, and, and you know, the fighting is what I love. You know, I fight, drop the hat. I mean, it's just, it's just what I was put here to do whatever it takes, you know, to win. That's, that's what I'm willing to do. Storm come to me one day, he said, come on my bus, I wanna to talk to you about something. I'm like, all right. He's like, a few of these guys, about four or five of them, have uh, decided uh, to take a real punch, you know. Not a real punch, but kind of a real punch. Supposed to be about 20, 30%, you know, just for realism. And there was this, <laughs> There was this dude that uh, his name was Todd Champion. He was a professional wrestler, 300 pounds, six foot seven, long hair, was walking around, you know. Everybody hated him. And he was like, Who do you want to use? I'm like, Just make sure that big guy right there, make sure he's one of them. He's like, He just smiled, and, you know. <laughs> so this guy gets up there, you know. Sprayed him down, you had to just stand there and let me hit him, right? Well, I laid into him, you know, a little bit more than 30%, right? About like 85%. You crushed his, uh, his orbit bone right here, right? And it just mashed it in. Another guy got his jaw broke. You know, these people aren't conditioned to get hit, you know, I mean, and there's no, there's no fun way of getting conditioned. You know, how do you get used to it? Well, how do you get conditioned to get hit? Get hit. You know, I mean, there's only one way to do it. Going out there and performing and, you know, ripping the spirit out of a man. I mean, you can suck the life out of somebody just by looking at him, you know? You know, I mean, uh, well, Tyson did that for years. You know, people were beat before they ever even started. You know, there's a lot of fighters uh, in this world that uh, got world-class talent, but they got ticker problem. They don't have any heart. And they don't have that killer instinct, you know. You get someone hurt, you take them out of there right now. I don't know, you just, you turn into this animal, <laughs> pretty much. I mean, you gotta have that quality or you're in the wrong sport. You need to be playing badminton or something. You know, I mean, uh, this is, it's not a sport for sissies, that's for sure. You know, prison's just not a good environment for anything other than more crime, you know? I didn't have any problem with the inmates. You know, I got along well with them and the prison guards. Uh, they all wanted their chance to discipline me, you know? And so I was under a microscope for all that time, you know? I mean, I. I had to walk around, the only one in the prison had to walk around with my hands behind my back. I mean, I, I don't know what they thought that was gonna do. You know, that, if I decided to take someone out, that is gonna stop me. I got in one fight the whole time I was there. And you're, you know, that's gonna happen. And I was in there about six months before it happened and them dude, say he was a crip. I'm a, you know, like, you know, whatever. Come a little closer and I'll show you what a real crip is, you know. 
And I'd finally sit there and listen to it for about 20 minutes and couldn't hold myself in the chair any longer, right? Had a few choice words, told my freaking punch a hole in his head about that big around. <clears throat> I jumped up and, you know, so I punched him out a couple, you know, hit him a couple times and that was it. And now that guy can run around and tell everybody he got knocked out by me in prison. So hope that gets him laid somewhere down the road. <laughs> Professional boxing shit ain't gonna help you here. No refs, no rounds. You fight until somebody quits. I'm ready to fight right now. He just had a fight, he ain't had time to rest. I don't care, Ace. I'm sorry the way things worked out for you. He chews fighters up and he spits them out. You don't know who you're with. You take the fight to that, and he won't know what hit him. I got a feeling it's not gonna be your night. We're not winning any decisions tonight. McQueen, the son. We came to have a little talk. I lost my youth. I lost my career. I lost my dream. Now what?